everyone thank you for joining me today I'm back to show you a tutorial for this magic card I got some requests to show you guys how I made this I just wanted to point out that this is not my original idea I actually learned this from a card making class that I attended a few months ago and we made this magic card in class so I'm going to show you today how to make this card so if you're interested to see how I made this then please keep watching first I will show you guys what materials that we will need for our magic card I have an eight and a half by five and a half card stock here scored at four and a quarter so this is an A2 size card then we will need a couple other card stock this is a white cardstock that is cut at 4 by 7 and we will fold this in half. I have another white cardstock here that is 3 and a quarter by 3 and a half and then we will need a window sheet which is also called a transparency and this is also cut at 3 and a quarter by 3 and a half. For the stopper we will need another cardstock that is half an inch by four inches and then to like I did over here I actually have this cut using this glitter paper that I got from Michaels and I've already cut it just to make things quicker later when we're putting the card together and this is using my Stampin' Up! framelits square framelits and I have used the fourth inside and the fifth inside. Since I don't really want to stamp the outside of the card, I have cut another, this is like a designer series paper, and this is five and a half by four and a quarter. And this is what's going to go in the front of our card. We will need stays on jet black ink. You will need stays on because stays on doesn't smear. So this is what you'll need to use to stamp on your transparency later. And we will need the Memento Tuxedo Black ink to stamp the image on our white cardstock because I will be using Copic markers to color the image and you will need a, an ink that is good with alcohol-based markers. And then to color the images that I have for today, I have used my warm grays, and this is W0, W1, W2, W3, W4, and W5. And then for the cheeks and the ears, I use R20. But you can use any markers you want. It doesn't have to be alcohol markers. And the most important thing is I will be using the Misty stamping positioner. But if you don't have the Misty, you can also use a stamp -a jig you can get this from Michaels. I will be using my Misty today. And as you can see, I've already lined up my cat image here and the sentiment because the Misty is just so much easier to line up the stamp images on the cardstock. This is the stamp set that I'm using today. This is actually from Simon Says Stamp. And I'm using this cat image right here. And then for the sentiment XOXO, I am using this Lawn Fawn Happy Wedding. So let's get started. The first thing that we need to do is to stamp our image on the white cardstock that we have. And we will need our Misty to stamp the image. Or if you don't have a Misty, then you will need your stamp -a magic So I will just line it up exactly at 7 inches, like so. You can see that 7 inches right there. I'm just lining it up on that side and I'm just pressing it down flush at the bottom of the stamp positioner and then I'm just putting my magnets on top of it so that when I line up my stamp which I already have here on my Misty then it will stamp on the exact same position all the time. And then the next thing that we need to do is set this image aside so that the ink will dry a little bit. And then we will get our transparency. I now have the transparency just like I did with the cardstock earlier. I will line it up to seven. And since it didn't stamp as well 
for the first time all I have to do is just line it up again on seven and now it's a better image the Misty is such a great tool to have for stamper. You can exactly do this project without having to go and making mistakes and wasting a lot of window sheets or cardstock. And as you can see, it's in the exact same place. And this is how you will achieve the magic of the image. Now I will be coloring my image and I'll be right back. So this is how it looks like after coloring it with my Copic markers, as you can see, it's a very cute image. I use the warm grays to blend all the colors together. And this is how it's going to look like when you put the transparency on top. And now we are ready to put the card together. We will need a circle punch and that is to create your little notch on top of the card here. I've also punched out a circle already. Yeah. Using my circle punch, you don't have to use Stampin' Up, you can use any other circle punch and I already have this here. We will also be using a tear and tape. This is a double sided tape for the inside of our card and I'm also using a tape adhesive and this is from Tombow. So we are ready to put this together now. All we have to do first is this is the four by seven cardstock and I only folded it in half using my bone folder just to make the fold crisp. And then we will also need this punch, and this is called the window punch from Stampin' Up. If you don't have this, you can just use your scissors and cut a notch on your cardstock. I'm lining this up right here, and just about halfway through. And then line it up again on the other side. and this is how it's going to look like. Okay, so if you don't have this punch, then all you have to do is cut it using your scissors and just leave a notch on both sides because that will stop your cardstock from getting pulled out all the way. Since I am not stamping the cardstock this time, I'm going to put the designer series paper right to decorate the front of my card. Just make sure that if you're stamping your cardstock in the front, your card opens this way because this is how we're going to close it since you have the tape on both sides. When we close this, you have to make sure that your sentiment is right where you want it to be. Now I will be using my square framelits and all we have to do is just line it up right in the middle just to make sure that it's in the middle and then I'm going to run this through my Big Shot to die cut the window part of the car. And this is how it looks like to create our window and that is where this image is going to go. So before we put this part of the card, I just wanted to use my adhesive to adhere the frame to finish off the look and of the front of the card. So now that this is finished, we have to set this aside for a second because we will be doing the magic part of the card. So all you have to do is line up your window sheet and the cardstock that you have colored already and put it down. Just press it down with your fingers, lift the transparency, and we are just going to put a little bit of adhesive on top. And don't worry about that right now. I know you can see the adhesive, but we will cover that with the circle later. And this is just to secure it. And then with this cardstock that you have here already, open it right in the middle. And then as you can see here, you need to lift your transparency and insert your transparency or your cardstock, the colored image, inside the cardstock like so and this is how you're going to achieve the magic of your card. See that? Isn't that cute? 
that's how you achieve it. Right now, all we have to do is just line it up like so. Make sure it's right in the middle. And then before you adhere everything, just make sure that it's right in the middle where you want it to be. And then just test it to see if they're still line up. And then just make sure that it's right in the middle between two notches. Okay. And I'm going to press this down like so. What you need to do is put a stopper. So open it up like that. And we're going to put a stopper right at the back. And that's where we're going to use this one half by four inches cardstock. And we are just going to put adhesive right at the bottom of this part of the card. Because you need that piece to stop it from going through. See what I mean? So when you pull it up, like so, it will stop there. See that? It stops there and doesn't go th all the way through. And now that we're ready to put this inside, all we have to do is line it up again. Just make sure that it's right in the middle. Okay, now we are going to fold this circle just in half, just so we can cover that adhesive that's on top right there. We're going to use a ribbon later to attach this ribbon right outside so you can pull it. But right now we are going to finish off making the card. So we are now going to insert this inside our card base. But before we do that, we are just going to use our circle punch again to create the notch right in the middle. Not and now we are just going to put this here like so. Make sure it's lined up where you want it. Hold it like so and just press it down with your finger. Use your adhesive and put adhesive at the back. You want your image to right be in the middle of your card. So since you already put the adhesive, all you have to do is just leave it there. Press it down, leave it there, and then take off the backing for your double-sided tape. And then fold it down. And that's how you create your magic card. So the last piece that we need to do is just cut a ribbon. Use any ribbon that you have. So now it finishes your card. So if you are getting confused by this tutorial, you can just pause it and then look at it again just to see how we achieved making this magic card. And that's how you learn how to make this. So that finishes our card for today. I hope you like this magic card as much as I do. And I hope that if you create a magic card, send me a link to your channel or to your blog so I can see what you've made. And this is a really nice interactive card that you can give to your kids, husband, boyfriend, and things like that. I hope you make one and send me a link. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you like this video or this tutorial, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. I will see you on my next crafting video. Bye for now and happy crafting!